Hello, my name is Brian Price and I'm a software developer here at Rackspace. Today, I'm gonna to talk about software development as stories and applications as cities. About a little over five years ago, I made the jump into the software development world. I started off as a junior developer and quickly became the lead of ServerMill. It, ServerMill is something I've, I've worked with almost my entire software development career up until around August to where it became part of TechM. But while I was managing server mill, both from a junior developer eventually to the application owner, there's a lot of things I started to realize about the software development world. The first thing is when it comes to software development, there is this impression that code is sacrilege, that you're not supposed to change, you're not supposed to change the existing code or behavior. That there's this assumption that once it's written, it was thoroughly th thought out and now it, it is set in stone. The second thing is from an application standpoint that, uh, that when there is a bad decision or unusual behavior, it always seems to be there is another team that was responsible for, for deciding that behavior. And this, uh, those are two, I think, misconceptions I would like to address today in this speech. I'm gonna start off with software development as stories. And before I do that, I wanna talk about a movie, Memento. It was made about 20 years ago. But what's unique about this movie is that it begins with the ending and ends with the beginning. The entire movie is told in reverse chronological order. And I think this quote here is a review of it. And I think it's, it, it accurately depicts the movie. It's where a scene that you're watching, you're initially watching is a result of some decisions. As you watch through the scene, you in your mind make up a lot of assumptions of how it came to be. As the movie progresses, you eventually find out that the, there was a different, it was a whole different story entirely. And that as you go through the movie, it challenges your assumptions all the way through. And the reason why I want to talk about this movie is this is how software developers use to describe their code. If you can imagine coming into a new team or working with another software developer, they may us they offer a suggestion of whether to use a function or a library but as you start using the library you begin with a lot of assumptions that it may help you out as you dive deeper you may find that those assumptions are not exactly what you expect and sometimes they could be completely contrary to what you were needing and through this i want to give an example this is this is a fictitious example but I can tell you the emotions that you may go through as you watch this is very familiar to me and probably many other developers. But for a second, I want you to imagine you're a brand new developer, you are on a brand new team, and you're, you have a task to, that requires getting an identity token. Identity tokens should be quick and your task is gonna run often, so speed is somewhat critical to this, app, to this new set of code. You, you start testing the get identity token and you find out it takes five seconds to run. Being the new developer, you start looking to code and try to figure out what's going on. As you dig in the code, you find out that this is the case. And as you can imagine here, the reason why it's taking five seconds is if you look at lines 14, 15, and 16, it first hits a test URL that should never work. It then will hit a staging URL where if it's truly PCI compliant, will not work in a production environment. Finally, it will hit the production endpoint and that's where it'll get the results needed. It's always worked up to this point. Every other, uh, every other part of the code that uses it has worked because speed has never been an issue. But you are writing a new set of code and speed is needed and you find out that this is a problem. So I want to... Imagine having that code and you start going through this. And this is the mindset or the steps that usually goes through when you, whenever you start thinking about it or start talking to other developers. And it's in the memento style where you begin with the ending and end with the beginning. You are, when you started this project, you are given this function to call to get the identity token. You know, it's used everywhere, so why not? It should be working. But when you look into it, it takes five seconds to run. And as you dig deeper, it has a hard-coded list of URLs. It works in both staging and production right now, so no one's really had, no one has needed to change this up to this point. And now if you change it, you know it's gonna break everything, or at least it'll break one of the environments, if not both. But when you ask somebody about this, they say it was, it was written by somebody relatively new at the time. Well, this 
I'm sure as a software developer, especially when you're new, we've all experienced this at some point in our career. But one thing that I've noticed is that it's okay to talk about like this, but when this is the only way you can tell a story about code, it has some very real impl implications. This is what I've seen happens when that is the only way to tell a story. If you're just told to work the JIRA to ignore it and create another JIRA to fix it later on. And I think as we all have seen throughout our career that when you create another JIRA, sometimes it goes in the backlog to never be seen again. Just because everyone's so busy, we're working on priorities, that's the nature of the beast at times. Plus, everyone said it's gonna be quick. If you go out of your way to start fixing this, this is something where everyone else who's been on the team longer than you and has more experience than you have already given the, the indication that this is a quick task. Now you may be going out of your way to, to make this much longer than everyone else has, uh, has assumed at this point. But finally, and I think this is the biggest thing, is that you are setting, you as application owners or existing members on the team, you're setting the, the notion that this code is acceptable, that most likely you're setting the foundation that they're gonna experience this in other places and they're less likely to speak up because nothing's ever gonna be done about it. This is a real implications of telling, describing code in only this format. Now, um, with everything that I said, imagine flipping it around and telling in a traditional chronological order. The log identity token was written by somebody experienced at the time. It was designed to break if it was ever changed significantly. It was built for staging and production only. There was no other environments that were considered at this point. It, it was done this through, a it did this through hard coding the list of URLs in the code itself. It takes five seconds to run this, this function now, but where it should have taken less than a second just to get the authentication token. And finally, this is now a crucial function in the application. If you look at this order, I can tell you that, at least from my personal experience in running an application, I would never want this kind of story to be in an application that I maintain. Or if it is there, I'd like to get it fixed. But if we change the order of how we talk about code, this has some a lot of more beneficial implications long term. The new person, if you're writing this code, can continue on the task, but now somebody else can go out of the way to fix it. You can have two developers simultaneously working on this issue. But regardless, you're setting the expectation that yes, this is a problem that a new person found and that this is something we do want to fix and we don't want this in the application. Or you can have the new person now take, make their task take longer, but now everyone knows that they found a problem and we understand why it's gonna take longer, that they're, go they're going out of the way to fix this and it's something that we all agree that needs to be fixed. But at the end of the day, you're ensuring that code quality matters, that it is more important to have code quality than just to get the task done. There's one way I think is very underutilized to actually help tell this story. And th this is unit test. Most of the time I can, see, I can see that unit tests are not, there's not many unit tests in applications. Let's be honest about that. But if you look at, if there's a unit test, usually it's limited to just line 32 and 33, where it says, I'm gonna call the token and do I get the response back? That's it. It doesn't show any of the underlying behavior. But if there is actual proper unit tests with this application, you can say for a production environment, it's gonna hit those three URLs. And it describes the behavior of the code. Unit test is critical for the stability of applications. And if it's written properly, it is very readable. So readable, even your managers can read it. But now I wanna take a step in the application world. If from running an application, it's been, I've learned a lot working with many different teams, working with QE, working with system administrators, and you learn a lot in how applications work within the entire business. But the applications really should be viewed as cities more than anything else. I hear, and even I use it, application may be a service or it may be a product, but I want you to take a step back and think of a city. A city like Los Angeles, San Antonio, you don't really think about the people running it. You think about the city as the culture and what does the city have to offer as a resident? Same thing with applications. Think about the applications that you work with, or sorry, not that you work with, but applications that you know within Rackspace. You don't really think about the teams or the developers behind it. You just think of it as an application that runs and helps keep the business. And I wanted to start diving down some of the things that cities do that I think would be, if we thought about from an application standpoint, it would help make things more stable. 
one thing is cities are built over time. In this picture, you see the Alamo, which was built in 1744, and there's a hotel behind it, which was built in 1932. Cities are built over time periods, but at the same time, cities need to continue running. The Alamo is not something we'd ever build today, but it's something we do need to keep up and running. And there is a, there's a historical value to it. Same, time, same thing can happen with applications where there may have been something built at a time. It's not something we'd, how we'd build it today, but it just needs to keep running. Sometimes within an application as well, there are features or code that we build just for a specific task. And this is the Tower of America here in San Antonio. It was built for the World Fair in 1968, and it was built really just for that. It's not something we'd ever build again. It's not something you'd probably reuse, but it was built for a specific task at the time, and it's something that still needs to stay. Same things I'm sure we can all see within an application. Businesses, they really are more like the upstream APIs and apps that the businesses, they help keep the city running. You cannot have a city running without a business. If you think about it, let's use an example, for example, McDonald's. It's a restaurant within San Antonio. If McDonald's is oh, it's owned by a corporation outside of San Antonio, so there's other decisions that be made. But if, San, if McDonald's, for some reason, made a change to where people start getting food poisoning in San Antonio and maybe other cities, but imagine you don't read the news, you're strictly in San Antonio, and now you start seeing people getting all kinds of food poisoning. Even though this may be caused by McDonald's, a lot of times people may have the assumption that this is San Antonio that has bad food quality, even though it's not something that, that was within their control. I'm sure within, if you're a middleware application, like I was with ServerMill, you can see this happen a lot of times, where you may think it's a ServerMill issue, but it could have been something more downstream. When it comes to the people, the mayor is essentially like the application owner. You don't really think of the mayor, you don't really think of the mayor when you think of cities, but you know there is a mayor that helps run the city. I think the only exception is New York City where we all probably know the mayors, but I, before I did this presentation, I had no idea who the mayor of San Antonio was. It's Ron, Ron Nirenberg. But the mayor is really supposed to be the face of the application right now. He may not have, he or she may not be responsible for it, are responsible for the problems that led up to the situation now, but you can imagine they are the ones that may be get blamed for things or people to come to for they want to try something new within San Antonio, but they are usually the face of it. And the same thing with if you're a product manager or you're a lead developer on an application. The city council is much like the development team. The development team writes code to help maintain a city where the city council passes ordinance and rules for the city to help function. The rules are very similar. When you think of a city, you don't think of the city council. They're sort of behind the scenes. Same thing with the development team. They are sort of behind the scenes where they are trying to, their best to make sure the application itself runs. If you really think about the underlying infrastructure, this is a lot like the networking teams, system administrators, DCOPs, or DCOPs and everyone else, that they are responsible for the underlying hardware. They may be using a lot of rules and techniques that they have from other cities, but they are the ones to help keep this run the city stabilized. Where, for instance, roads and construction on roads, where you know we've had traffic where a road goes from three lanes to one lane, you know that's always a problem. Same things can happen sometimes with infrastructure, but at the end of the day, it's the responsibility of of the infrastructure or engineers to help keep, keep the city running, or at least stable. And the same thing happens with the networking teams and system administrators. Finally, if you really think about it, the residents and visitors of San Antonio are the customers and users. This is a picture of the Riverwalk where residents and visitors, they don't really come to San Antonio wondering how it, how it works or how things came to be. They just want everything to work seamlessly. If they want to go visit the Alamo or the Riverwalk, they just want to do so with ease. And some for the residents, they want to live there, but the visitors, they come for just to have fun for a weekend maybe or a week. Every visitor or resident may have a different idea of what San Antonio is, whether it's a vacation or your hometown. Same thing with customers. Customers may have different views of what your application are, but at the end of the day, they all just want to make sure it works. As you can imagine, it all works together seamlessly. With a city, 
you really don't think about each and every one of those roles if you think about it. If you think about, once again, Los Angeles, Seattle, any of those big cities, or even San Antonio, when I look at this picture here, I don't really see the people behind it. I see a city that somehow magically works together. And this is something I think we should start thinking about the same thing with applications. It's there may be certain roles that each that each of us play, but at the end of the day, it's to help it run for the business as a whole. And now I just want to summarize some of the things that I talked about here. First, don't be afraid to dig in the code, even if it's old. Nothing is sacred. I don't think that any developer should be afraid of other people criticizing or talking about the code. It could have been written years ago and it might be time for a change. Other times it may, it even though it's old, it should something that should stay the same. But as we talk about the code, make sure that we're allowed to tell the story both forward and reverse and vice versa. There shouldn't be one way to tell the story about the code. The second thing is applications grow over time and teams and owners change too. Just like the mayor of San Antonio, he, he began in 2017, I believe. So he's now responsible for a lot of our problems within San Antonio, but he's not the cause for it. Same thing with applications. Even though there's a development team now running it, they may not have been caused for it, but they are now responsible for it. So if you think in terms of that, working with them and not holding them accountable to the, uh, to the issues is a better way to look at things. And same thing with the infrastructure team. Sometimes I know with infrastructure, if there may be a database, a weird customized database, we shouldn't assume that it's always their fault. There could have been another team that decided. It's always better to work with the teams. Decisions are made with the resources and expertise available at the time. And I wanna harp on this real quick. A lot of times I hear that this, there was a decision that was well thought out and somebody's doing their own rogue configuration or customization. I can tell you from experience that a lot of times it's less about somebody wanting to do something new and fancy, but more along the lines, they just don't have the resources available at the time to do what's needed for the business. So they have to improvise and go out of the way to build something at the time. And I think this is what we all can relate to at this point. And finally, and this is, a, I think, one of the fundamental things I think we should be thinking about. Support the application and not the team. Even, for instance, me with server mill, I think if, if I had teams that would help support the application, see what server mill does and say, here's ideas on how we can make server mill more stable, that would be extremely beneficial. And I think a lot of people who own applications could probably say the same thing, that if they're, that supporting the application and not the team makes things easier. When you support the team, what you're saying rather is that your value is not your expertise or how well you can do things, but it's how easy do you work with that team. And that's something we all need to consider. Thank you. Any questions?